On tonight's episode of the Mike Pressler Show, we break down the Bulldogs' NEC tournament victories over Quinnipiac and Mount St. Mary's. We sit down with Peter McMahon, and we also take a look back at the season that was in 2012. It's all here next on the Mike Pressler Show on the Ocean State Network. And welcome to Blackie's Bulldog Tavern here in Smithfield, Rhode Island, home of the Mike Pressler Show. I'm Mike Mancuso, joined, as always, by the head coach of the Bryant men's lacrosse team, Mike Pressler. And coach, first of all, congratulations. Thanks, 2012 Mike. NEC Tournament Champions definitely has a nice ring to it. And, you know, it's Bryant's first Division I postseason title. How wonderful was it for you to send off your six seniors with that victory? It was uh, meant more to me than anything. Uh, for those six uh, young men I'm very, very close to who signed on with me, yep. you know, five years ago when uh, Bryant wasn't as fashionable yep. to, to play Division One lacrosse as it is today, and for them to go out as truly champions, uh, a first ever, uh, to do it on the road, to do it in the Final Four atmosphere, to uh, to stake a 10-1 lead <laughs> at half against uh, Mount St. Mary's, a remarkable weekend. Remarkable day for my guys. Definitely. And as always, we continue the good news corner here at the beginning of the show. You wind up in the media poll number 19, and also receiving votes in the coaches poll would put you basically at number 21 right now. But NEC honors you guys clean house basically. Defensive player of the year, Jamison Love. Rookie of the year, Kevin Massa. First teamers, Peter McMahon, Colin Dunster, Mason Poley, Glenn Myrano. Jamison Love and Kevin Massa. Second teamer, Max Wiesenberg. Rookie teamers, Kevin Massa, Brian Schlansker, and Connor Dent. What are your thoughts on all the all-conference selections, and did you think anyone was overlooked? Uh, I'm not sure anyone was really overlooked, but for those 10 young men that got recognition, you know, you have a good year, that's going to happen. You know, as they always say, to uh, kind of the victor go the spoils, and, and you know, we were number two in the league. Uh, overall, that one pump against Robert Morris. Yep. And uh, at the end of the day, just so pleased for those 10, uh, and especially, uh, you know, the two uh, major award winners. Kevin Mass, I mean, hands down, got to be oh, the yeah, rookie yeah. of the year. <laughs> I mean, come on. And uh, Jamison Love, our fearless leader, um, the reason, I think, a lot of the reason we're here today, yeah. celebrating this conference championship, and uh, couldn't be more prouder of those two guys and, and the other eight. Absolutely. And now we get right into the first semifinal game. You guys take on Quinnipiac. You wind up winning 11-6. It takes you to 13-4, and four. but prior to the game, you saw that Mount St. Mary's upset Robert Morris. Did that factor into any pregame speeches or have really any kind of putting your team on upset alert? Um, no, we didn't, uh, we didn't talk about it. Uh, I didn't, the coaches knew. We didn't mention it. We were so in tune to beating Quinnipiac, and quite frankly, I was surprised that Robert Morris got beat. Yep. Um, Mount St. Mary's is a heck of an offensive team, but I wasn't sure that Mount could defend them. And it turned out to be a 16-15 shootout. And, um, uh, but again, at the end of the day, not worried one bit about their game. It was all about Quinnipiac and us advancing to the final. Right. So let's take a look at some of the highlights from the win over Quinnipiac in the semifinals. You know, I, you know it was a solid win, very workmanlike for us. Uh, I didn't think it was our best stuff overall. You know, we got out to that 2-1 lead, then the, then the lightning hit. And Alex Zammerfeld getting us going there, real room in time. Brian Schlankster on the move. Jay making a save and getting into, guess who? Mason Poli over the top. The second line here again. Kyle Crowley to uh, Brian Schlankster left-handed. And that one was right after the lightning delay. You know, and it was a one-goal game for a while and uh, great rebound pickup by Peter McMahon here. You know, Colin Zunster just being so powerful off the dodge. Again, you guys wound up winning that one 11 to 6. And of course, there was the 55 minute lightning delay. You guys were up 5 4 at the half. You outscored them 6 to 2 in the second half to win 11 6 just before midnight. So, long day, long night, but you guys did pull out the victory. You had eight different goal scorers Max Wiesenberg with two goals and assists, Cody Isdainer with two goals and assists in that one, and Jamison Love just allowing the six goals, making eight saves on 14 shots. You guys really dominated, though, in both face-offs and ground balls. 37-18 in ground balls and 76% on face-offs. But considering all that, what were you most happy with with your team's performance? Uh, our start. Yeah. You know, you look at it, uh, we were so ready to play. We got after him on the ground, and Kevin Mass had a lot to do with that. We just had the ball. Yeah. And in all my time in 30 years of coaching, I've never been a part in a championship game of such a dominant first-half performance. And I think... 
at the end of the day, you look at the key stat, we had one turnover in the yeah. first half. And it was total domination on our part. And when you got a nine goal lead, you know, going into the third quarter, um, you're allowed to do some things to kind of change the tempo of the game. And, and that mistake in a nine goal lead allowed us to, to do that. Yep. And now, considering how late the game ended on Friday night, and then you had the short turnaround, what were you worried about most heading into the championship game? Just fatigue. You know, uh, this was going to be game 18 for us. And as I've said many times, and I've been in this situation before, Friday's game is a coach's game, yeah. Sunday's game is a player's game. But fortunately, um, our six seniors played like the wily vets they are and put the team on their back like they usually have done when we face some adversity. And the other guys kind of rode on their coattails and we played our tails off. And, uh, you know, I'm not easily impressed. Um, but for their, that first 30 minutes of lacrosse, I yeah. was very impressed. Absolutely. Now you wound up winning the final 12-6. to 6. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the win over Mount St. Mary's in the NEC Tournament Championship Final. You know, Captain Max, Max Wiesenberg, first goal of the game, on the move, left-handed, that low corner, great shot. That got us started right away. You know, Kevin Massa on a face-off violation. <laughs> we run a little, little set piece here to, to uh, Matt Larson, a great handle by Dan Sipperly. Moving to the ball. Yeah, separately wound up with a first quarter hat trick. What a play by Matt McGrady on their best player. You know, key defensive play at the at the start of the game. You know, Peter McMahon, great inside feed to Dan Sipperly. Collins Dunster on the move. Colin Dunster again, you know, four goals in the day. Travis Harrington, our most physical dodger from behind. Great little inside roll. And that made it 8-1 early in the second quarter. You know, when you got the ball like uh, this young man does for us, good things are gonna happen. Little pick play. Great handle by Peter McMahon. That made it 11-3 late in the third quarter. <laughs> And there it is. That's got to be the best moment of the day right there. You know, and what, they went right to their leader, Jamison Love, and that's what they do. And, uh, you know, my eyes were welling up. It was very, very emotional ending and, uh, you know, just a dream season for the Bryant Bulldogs. It certainly was. And six Bulldogs wound up found, finding the back of the net in the game. Colin Dunster leading away four goals. Sipperly with a hat trick and an assist. Peter McMahon a goal, two assists. Max Wiesenberg with two goals. Bill Redpath with a goal. Travis Harrington with a goal. And Matt Larson, another senior with an assist in that one. Jamison Love named the tournament MVP. And also making the all-tournament team were uh, Jamison Love, Colin Dunster, Kevin Massa, and Dan Sipperly. And again, another game in which you guys won and dominated the ground balls. 27-19, face-offs again, 73%. I mean, these are ridiculous numbers, especially in uh, tournament settings as well. And the man-up unit, 2 of 4 in the game. Penalty killing unit, 2 of 2. So it just seemed to be a great all-around performance. And, you know, despite the quick turnaround from Friday night's game, you guys really came out on fire. What was the, I guess, secret to getting your guys to come out like that? Because they just came out like a team possessed. It was the finale. You know, it was the last time we were going to do it. You know, the NCAA tournament was uh, kind of out of the picture. And uh, we knew this was our last game. And uh, I think this, the urgency to send out the senior class on, on a great note, a positive note, with a championship in hand. And uh, we were highly motivated. Um, and you know, not much more you could say to it. And, and we were just uh, so excited to play. And uh, again, so proud. And to do it on the road. Right. You know, to do it on the road, um, you know, 13 hours from home. Just, um, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, been at my former school, we're a lot involved in a lot of conference championships. And in my own, you know, sense of it, this one was probably the most rewarding that I've ever been, been a part of. Yeah. Well, again, congratulations on the tournament victory. Great to see the Bulldogs pull out the win. When we return, we'll be sitting down with junior captain Peter McMahon. It's all here next on the Mike Pressler Show on Ocean State Network.